Dearly beloved in Christ Jesus, as from yesternight, continuing through the next 50 days, one very important feature in our worship will be the Pascal candle and another feature in our worship will be the singing of Alleluia, which for the last 50 days, you may say, we have not been singing. Hallelujah. The word hallelujah <clears throat> actually is not in itself a meaningful word, but an expression of joyful surprise. An expression of joyful surprise. In our own tradition amongst our own people, the Avis, the Northerners, the Ashantis, when you are beautifully surprised by something, you do what they call urulations. You hear people say, la 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 A sign of a joyful, happy, Surprise. So the words hallelujah made up of a lot of L's with vowels in between. Is meant to be an expression of joyful surprise. And the joyful surprise that we utter before the Gospels which we will continue each time we are about to proclaim the gospel, should remind us of the fact that we are people who are proclaiming that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and that he has conquered death once and for all. We love to sing hallelujah. There are so many songs that have hallelujah in them. And all of them are joyful. Yes, it is believed that we are expressing our happiness that Jesus is risen from the dead. But it should not only be an expression of our joy that Jesus is risen, it is also to be our own promise that we shall become messengers of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And we are going to go out into the world to proclaim to all men and women that our Lord Jesus Christ is indeed risen. He is risen from the dead. He has conquered death once and for all. And he who is the way, the truth, and the life is now there to show us how you and I can conquer death also forever. Dearly beloved in Christ Jesus, we are in very unusual times. Our president has said it a number of times. Our Holy Father, the Pope, has also repeated it Everyone who speaks, every head of state, says we are in very unusual times because of the coronavirus, which started somewhere, we are told, in November last year in Wuhan, and in the past four months has spread throughout the whole world. As you and I sit here, the count is that over 1.6 million people 
have been infected by this virus. The count is that about, I hope I'm not exaggerating, 50,000 people have already died. And about 80 to 90,000, if not more, are still suffering from this disease. And we are to make sure that, yes, we help to conquer this disease. We have been given what to do. Hygienic existence. We are to wash our hands very well with soap under running water for about 20 seconds because the coronavirus can be killed by soap and water running for about 20 seconds. We are to avoid physical contact with one another. You say, how can we express love if we cannot embrace, we cannot shake hands, we cannot come together in order to show our joy and happiness? Unfortunately, this is because of the coronavirus. We have been told to have hand sanitizers and disinfectant wipes, to wipe our hands, to wipe our tables, and the rest of it. It almost feels uncomfortable that when somebody comes to you and the person leaves, you have to almost wipe everything that the person may have touched. How can we sing hallelujah in the face of such a tragedy. About two days ago, I was told that a doctor whom I knew in Ghana has also died, all because he was working to bring life to some patients, and he was infected, and he has died. In Italy, we know that about 80 priests have died all because they contracted this disease, most probably in their service to humanity. We know that in Italy, we know that in Germany, doctors and nurses have died in their hundreds. How can we sing hallelujah? How can we say that the Lord is risen? He is risen indeed. How can we say that death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? Dearly beloved, I know how challenging it is. Our government is trying to do what we can. Our brothers and sisters who came from outside Ghana have been quarantined for about two weeks, and they are being tested, and we are discovering many more are bringing with them this coronavirus. Some time ago, when our brothers and sisters went abroad to America, to Germany, to Italy, to uh, China, to Spain, France, name it, to the UK, they brought with them gifts, money, joy, happiness. How can we sing hallelujah to the Lord when we should avoid contact with these, our brothers and sisters, until we say they have been proven not to have been infected by this corona disease. What is even more painful is that when somebody of yours is infected, you cannot even visit the person. You are not allowed to go there. And if the person should die, you are not even allowed to go for the burial. I know of Ghanaians in New York. Three, four of them belonging to our Catholic community have died. They were choristers, beautiful people, very helpful, very prayerful, very generous in their kindness. And maybe because of their generosity, some of them have contracted this disease. They were kept in isolation in the hospitals. They succumbed and have died. 
And some of them have had to be buried without anybody there. How can we sing hallelujah to the Lord our God in the face of this darkness? Dearly beloved, yes, we are standing right in front of the empty tomb. We are standing right in front of the empty tomb, a symbol of defeat, a symbol that, yes, our beloved has died, and even the body has been taken away. How can we sing hallelujah at this time of the year? And I know that this time will go down as the most painful time when Christians all over the world I expected to say the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed, but in their homes. Because they cannot come out to share that joy. This is where the faith of John, as narrated in today's gospel, comes powerfully to you and me. That is the type of faith we are to exhibit in the Lord our God. We are told that on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early. Why did she go there so early? Because of love. She loved Jesus Christ. Yes, he is, was dead, but she loved him so much, she was going there to weep at the tomb and to embalm the body as a symbol of her Love, expression of her love for Jesus Christ. And we are told that she came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. This woman's love for the body of Christ was that she wanted, give me the body. And we are told, if you remember very well, in one of the Gospels, as she stood there weeping at the empty tomb, Jesus came by and she thought that was the gardener. And she asked him, if you have taken the body away, please show me where you have laid it so that I may go and take it up. That is how Mary of Magdala expressed her love for Jesus Christ in front of the empty tomb. We are told Simon Peter and John, the beloved, ran together. But yes, the younger one, with greater love in his heart, he ran to the tomb ahead of Peter, the old man. And he reached there, he did not enter the empty tomb. Why, I don't know. Simon Peter arrived and we are told he immediately went in. And the scripture tells you and me he saw the linen cloths lying and the napkin which had been over the head of Jesus, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded in a place by itself. Strange. The linen cloths of Jesus. But the body of Jesus was not there. The empty tomb of defeat. The empty tomb of victory of death over life. Then we are told that the other disciple, John, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. And the answer why we can sing hallelujah now, the answer is what the gospel tells us. He saw and believed. He saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Hallelujah. 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 He is risen. He is risen indeed. And that is the faith that comes from love. The faith that comes from understanding Jesus Christ. 
Faith that comes from being close to Jesus Christ as John was. My dear brother, my dear sister, that is the message for you and me. Yes, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. Whosoever believes in him, that is the key to singing hallelujah, believing in Jesus Christ. And Jesus himself will tell us during his life, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Do you believe this? Jesus will ask Mary and Martha at the death of their brother Lazarus. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he should die, I will raise him up from the dead. Do you believe this? Those are the words of Jesus Christ. God says whoever believes in Christ may have eternal life. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe it? Mary and Martha at the tomb of their brother said, yes, we know that you are the Messiah. You he will rise at the last day. And Jesus said, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Dearly beloved, Alleluia means we are straining to see the glory of God. That God can conquer death through Christ and through you and me, living a Christ-like life, we can also conquer death. And so, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, as we read on Holy Thursday, John chapter 13, verse 1, it says, yes, he loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. Jesus loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. He washed the feet of his disciples, even those who were going to betray him who are going to deny him, who are going to abandon him. Not only that, he suffered death, injustice and everything at the hands of the chief priests, the Pharisees, at the hands of Pilate. He was tortured by the soldiers. But for love of you and me, Jesus withstood it. For no greater love has anyone done to lay down his life for his friends. No greater love has anyone than to lay down his life for his friends. And what happens when Jesus has finished washing the feet of his disciples? He would tell them, you call me teacher and Lord, and that is what I am. And if I, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you must also wash each other's feet. Not only that, in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, Jesus will now tell us, a new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. He says, by your love for one another shall they know that you are my disciples. How has Jesus Christ loved you and me? By dying for you and me on the cross giving you and me an example of love, giving you and me an unlimited expression of love, service, selfless service, selfless service of love to the point of dying for you and me. And I'll go back again to what is said of John the Beloved. He saw and he believed. He believed the scriptures. He believed Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. And so, my dear brother, my dear sister, in the face of the coronavirus and the disaster that it is wreaking along everywhere, people getting sick, people even who go to serve out of love getting sick and dying, people getting sick, and we are, our inability to approach them physically, to bring them even comfort and solace. 
People dying. And we cannot even be there for their burial. How can we conquer this death? How can we sing hallelujah? He is risen. He is risen indeed. I believe. I believe. Ours is to continue the revolution that Jesus Christ himself began. What is called the revolution of love. Love unlimited. He loved his own and he loved them to the end. We must love one another and love each other to the end. Love is an energy, a power that is in each and every one of us. And I believe that if we will follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ and live a life of love as Christ himself lived, we shall unleash the power of God to take care of the sick, the needy, in us, through us, through our acts of love, and we shall infect the world with a new virus called love, a new virus called service, a new virus called selflessness, a new virus called self-sacrifice. And it is only by your love for one another shall they know that you are my disciples. And it is only when we understand the revolution of love that we are supposed to be part of. It is only when we are filled with that love, selfless love, like the doctors and the nurses have and are taking care of our poor and our needy, our sick brothers and sisters. Love, selfless love, like our government officials are trying hard to bring about. Selfless love, love that is, we are being asked, all of us, to express by staying at a distance from one another. Yes, praying, working hard, and obeying the rules and regulations. Selfless love. Yes, by not shunning those people who are sick. But even selfless love by sharing with those who are poor and needy what we ourselves have and are hoarding. People are hoarding masks. People are hoarding food. People are hoarding drinks. Why? This is the time in the face of this sickness that we should exhibit some of the love of Jesus Christ and unleash the virus of love so that we can put to an end this corona disease that is afflicting us. Dearly beloved, St. Paul, in one of his letters, says something that I find very powerful. And what does he say? Permit me to look for it and to quote it. In his letter to the Philippians, this is, I think, the message for you and me on this day of the resurrection. That I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith, to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Philippians chapter 3. If you have time, dearly beloved, wherever you are, read from verse 7 to Verse 11. But the powerful one is verse 9 and 10. And be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection, and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow 
I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Brothers and sisters, this is the virus of love. Believing in the resurrection, the resurrection of Christ, which came about because he loved. He loved endlessly. Let us today and from today onwards resolve to infect the world with a new virus, the virus that is called the love of Christ. Yes, if even we have to suffer, as he says, let us bear it with Christ-like serenity. Let us serve one another as Christ served us by washing our feet. Let us forgive as Jesus Christ has forgiven us. And let us unleash this love in our homes, in our families, in our places of work, in our villages, in our cities, in our country, Ghana, loving like Christ has loved us on the continent of Africa and all over the world. Then and only then can we continue to sing hallelujah, 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 for Christ is indeed risen. We shall not sing it only with our lips and with our hearts, but we shall sing it by our way of life. For he loved us. He loved us to the end. He wants us to love the world with his love. Selfless love. Love that is ready to suffer. Self-sacrificing love. This is the only virus that I believe with which we can conquer the corona disease. I wish you, my dearly beloved, wherever you are, a happy Easter. Join Christ in this revolution of love and let us infect the world with the virus of love. And may Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.